172 days ago, I put nothing but dirt in a jar and this happened. Hold on, hold on. Before I show you the results, I really want to show you how I set up this jar. It's a really cool and simple project that I'm sure will blow you away if you give it a shot. So let's rewind back all the way to April 4th, the day I set up this jar. This project is made up out of four key components. A jar, a drainage layer, a substrate barrier and of course dirt. First there's the jar itself. There's nothing special about this particular jar except for the gasket and lock that allowed for a completely sealed container. This is a key feature in creating a self-sustaining system. Otherwise the system will require constant watering to make up for evaporation. But now water will start to collect at the bottom of this jar. And if we allow it to stay in constant contact with soil, it will create a lot of problems like root rot or excessive mold. But by simply adding a drainage layer, we don't have to worry about any of that. In my case, this layer is made from small pebbles, but something like marbles, lika or a sponge will do the trick as well. Next, we'll need to add a barrier to prevent the soil from mixing with a drainage layer and completely negating its effect. I'll be using a piece of geotextile fabric for my barrier, but anything that will allow water to pass while holding back the substrate will work. And finally, the dirt itself. For this I went down to my local forest and collected a tiny bit of soil. And I highly recommend getting your soil from a forest, as this will give us a really high chance of introducing springtails into our jar. Springtails are these tiny little animals that like to eat mold and decaying leaves and therefore they're often added to terrariums as a so-called cleanup crew. At this point the jar is finished and we can place it in a window. Just make sure that you don't put it in direct sunlight as this will quickly cook whatever is inside. Now before we take a look at the results there's one more thing I did to ensure the success of this system. And that's opening up the jar. There are most likely a ton of tiny animals in this jar. And without any plants to provide oxygen, they'll slowly suffocate. So for the first week, I open up the jar for a minute or two every day to allow for some air exchange. But after the first week, that wasn't necessary anymore, as the first plants started to appear. In week two, even more plants start to sprout, laying down the foundation of our new ecosystem. However, this is nothing compared to what happened in week three as one of my favorite kinds of plants start to appear. Moss. These tiny patches start to appear everywhere. And not only were they trying to cover the surface, they also start to appear lower in the substrate. But it didn't take long for a competitor to show up, as only a few days later I could notice some grass. From this point onward, the jar continued to evolve and at day 53 you could see a tiny ecosystem at form. The moss evolved into this green layer of dust, covering a big portion of the setup. The tiny little stems from week 1 grew up to become two vastly different plants. The grass also became more lush and a whole new plant appeared right next to it. At 53 days I was already incredibly happy with the results. But this ecosystem was just getting started. As three months later it had transformed into an incredibly lush slice of nature. The moss has now fully covered every last bit of dirt and transformed it into a fluffy green carpet. The bigger plants in the middle are competing for every last bit of growing space and made it all the way to the top of the container. Now from a visual standpoint this setup definitely seems to be thriving, but the best way to tell is to open up the jar and do a little sniff test. Oh yeah, this system is definitely thriving. It smells really, really good in there. And since there are a few brown leaves, I decided to give the plants a little haircut. These trimmings were then cut into smaller pieces and placed back into the system to be broken down by our cleanup crew and eventually turn into new nutrients for the plants. I then wiped down the glass to get rid of any debris and added a little bit of water to make up for anything that may have been lost during maintenance. And this is the first time I've ever done anything about this jar and that includes watering. 
Ever since I set it up, I haven't touched it at all. I resealed the jar and took a step back to appreciate what we've created. What began as nothing more than a simple jar of dirt has evolved into a beautiful slice of nature. I am absolutely blown away with how this one turned out, but I want to know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments below and if you enjoy content like this I recommend you watch this video next to see me build a picture frame terrarium. I'll see you there.